my boss then understood my career path. I wanted to move into something more commercial, apply the technical knowledge that I had acquired. And I think the, the, nat the, the path that was available was, okay, go sell the fixed network which you have managed, right? So we had to um, put a commercial model around the fixed uh, business, drive fiber to the home of our consumers so that people can have fixed broadband at home. Um, and and today I did that for two and a half years, close to three, and then in February, my announcement was made um, to become the CEO. And at the point you were called from Melicom to uh, take up a job at Vodafone, you had absolutely no idea that you would one day become the chief executive officer. Not at all. Not at all. And so it came to you as a big surprise. Um, by the time I was leaving technology um, in Vodafone, I kind of knew this was a possible path. And that is why um, you would see in my profile that I started working towards business leadership, um, do it, going to INSEAD in France to learn about um, business strategy and business marketing. And then when I went to Kellogg in the U.S., we did more consumer marketing. So I had to get that balance in a very short time because my background had been heavy technology. Mm. So you sit at the top now uh, as a chief executive officer of a multinational company like Vodafone with how many workers? <laughs> so almost a thousand workers directly, um, but we impact close to three to four thousand um, other people who we employ indirectly um, as well. So you've been through the mill, you've risen through the ranks. What do you think is a difficulty with youth unemployment, graduate unemployment today? Well, um, what I see is everybody wants to work for somebody. And when I look at the opportunities around us, I wish young people coming up would see the opportunities and want to work for themselves. Um, my, my two sisters have done that. So one, as I mentioned, decided I'm not working for anybody. I'm starting a school. And today, her students are part of her students are in, are in the university. She is running up to the JHS model already, right? Um, my other sister worked for 17 years in corporate and decided, actually, I've seen a problem that I can solve. Why do I continue to work in corporate? She quit, and she's running a very successful business. And when you identify a problem in society and you solve, nobody can take away the business that you grow. So for me, I think that, yes, there are very few companies today coming up, and that is why we continue to have the unemployment, what we are calling unemployment, because you want somebody to employ you. It is okay, but if you can identify a problem in society and solve it, then you can set up that your business. That is the greatest challenge, not capital. The first problem is identifying the societal problem and, and being willing to go there. When you have made up your mind, the other challenges that come with it, you can model and solve. The difficulty is that it is so difficult to want to start. That is the, that is the barrier I see, the barrier of the mind, where we tell ourselves, how can I start this water business? How can I start this salt business? How can I start this children events company? It's not possible. We put the barrier first. If we take off that barrier as in there is a societal problem, I want to be the one to solve it. Then we can figure out all the challenges. Now, I'm not saying there are no challenges. You will encounter the issues with how to finance the business. You may have to start with working for somebody for a year or two, but back out with the money that you make and go and work on your business. You may have to find a partner who would put his money into that business and go with you for a percentage of your company. But those problems can be solved. The biggest challenge for me is the barrier of the mind. That's the CEO of Waterford Ghana. Please put your hands together for her. <laughs> pretty shortly, pretty shortly, I'll be coming to the students to also pose their questions. So kindly get your questions ready. I'm going to ask this final question. Then I'll come to you to uh, follow up on your questions as well. So you sit at the big table, and I'm sure on a daily basis you receive numerous applications. Mm -hmm. I know you've got this uh, recruitment for young graduates. What do you look out for when people you know, want to seek employment at your place? So you can, as you said, you can imagine the um, number of applications that will come through for a particular role, and everybody would have a first degree. And some would say, like literally everybody would say, okay, I've done my master's. And what is unique about you? The people in the room would not be looking at the name and everything like that. 
they'll be looking at what else you have to offer. And at least for me, what I look at is what has the person done with their time? So you have your vacations. Were you even a sales agent for somebody? It means you have learned to work in a team. You have learned to interact. You have learned to manage change. You have learned to do something with people. You have had the temptation of money around you and you haven't taken it. You have built your integrity. You have done something with your time. And that makes it. Some, some people get the job because they've learned language. I interviewed one girl in one of my um, previous roles. In fact, I was looking for, it was an engineering role in our network operation center. And she graduated with a third class. So a I had third a class. third class. Mm. And I had interviewed quite a number of people second class. Our part is everybody has had a degree, right? The difference she brought was the eloquence because she had spent time within the periods that she was in school to improve on how she speaks. She had learned how to interact, and the job we're putting her in was how she was, she was um, an engineer at operation center because you'd be communicating with the engineers on the field and things like that. She stood out so clearly, I gave her the job. And when I look at that girl today, I am so happy I did you that. You don't regret giving no, her the I job? No, I don't regret Her third class was immaterial at that point because I, by the time I finished interviewing her, it was so clear that she had more to offer. I couldn't judge her but just the results of her exam. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So who's got the first question? Your name, your school, and then you pose a question. Pretty, pretty fast. Who's got the microphone? Kindly pass the microphone round. Who's got the microphone? Let's be snappy, please. First question. Let's have the two microphones on both sides. Who's got the microphone, please? Yes. Okay, so my name is Susarime from the Ghana Institute of Journalism. And my question is, what should a lady do to climb the ladder of success? So, it's not whether you're a lady or a lady. I'll answer the question for climbing the ladder, and then we'll come to you being a lady. So what is important for wherever you are now is to excel. So it doesn't matter what role you have been given in the company you are interning for, or what, um, what role you have taken up in school, a leadership role. Please excel. Whatever program you have chosen to pursue, please do well. That is it. O level, do well. JHS, do well. SHS, do well. Whatever level. So when you come into the workforce and you are, you are giving a, a sales, en sales engineer role, sales um, agent role, you move to an admin role, whatever the role, understand what is expected of the role and do it so well. Let people see what you are doing. We go there and we bury our heads in what we do. Apart from not giving our best, if you're not giving your best, you can forget it. But when you're giving your best, make sure your best is seen. Because people go, they are hardworking, and nobody knows them for being hardworking. I'm not saying be loud and be all over the place, but make sure that you're hardworking. Those who will manage your progress are seeing what you are contributing to the table. Okay? And then when opportunities come, keep your eyes open and go for them. Sometimes attend interviews not because you want the role but because you want to test your capability and put yourself out there. You will go and not pass, but leave an impression on the minds of the people. The next time they are looking for somebody, they will turn into your corner and say, this girl attended the interview, she did well, but we didn't give her the role, let's go back to her. When roles come up, apply and, and, and test it. You may get it. If you don't get it, don't break down. When the next role comes, apply, okay? And then and the next one I want to tell you is, Enhance yourself as you go. Listen, I don't, I'm not the type that will take a very big book and read. But in my industry, the industry changes so fast that I cannot afford not to know certain things. So I read on Google. Unpardonable. It will be unpardonable. So you go on search engines. In your short times, in between when you're waiting for this program to start, you could be checking two or three definitions. You have become better than the person who didn't check it. So upgrade yourself. Get to know something so that when an opportunity comes, you are ready. People miss out on climbing up these ladders we are talking about because they are not ready. And I see people come into the, the organization and they just come in, I'm a graduate and I want to be a manager. It's not just enough. You ask him two, three questions and he's flawed 
because he doesn't have depth. Spend time to understand the organization that you're working for, the area that you've been put in, so that you speak with authority on the subject. Very, very important. And once your work is being seen, when the opportunity comes, you will be considered. Next question. Okay, my name is Patience Sejokum from Ghana Institute of Journalism. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever faced an unpleasant situation of being marginalized because of your gender? Um, I've been quite blessed. Um, so in my class, uh, electrical class, we're 48, six of us were ladies. And when I went to my first company to work for, we were actually seen as quite iconic. So a woman, electrical engineering, coming to work with the guys on the field, they were very, very respectful. They were very willing to show off that they have a woman amongst them and they want to help her. So I have actually been more blessed in my journey as a woman pursuing what people call male-dominated. And so I haven't been marginalized, as we will call it, because of my, my gender. I've actually um, enjoyed the, the iconic nature of what it brings. Uh, people look at you differently. They talk to you. They want to help you kind of thing. All right, I'm afraid we've got to take a short break. Uh, we'll return to get more from the Chief Executive Officer of Vodafone Ghana. Uh, this is Time with the Captains, your monthly business mentorship program, live here on TV3. the Huawei Y9s before 29th November 2019 to enjoy a free gift box, Bluetooth headset and Bluetooth speaker. Terms and conditions apply. Gillette Blue 2 has a water-activated lubra strip giving you a clean shave with fewer nicks and cuts. 